I have been so sick. I know I said that in the last couple videos. It feels like a month and a half ago. It was really only about three days, I guess. But I thought I was at the peak or the uh, apogee of my cold, and it just got worse and worse. My throat was like... So I decided I was trying to do too much. So I stopped making videos. I stopped doing everything for a few days and just stared off into space. Did a little reading. Anyway, what brought me running back is this wonderful tag, the Spring Into Adventure tag, which I'm so grateful to be uh, tagged on by, by Mark from uh, Book Time with Elvis. I had also seen, <clears throat> I had already seen Steve Donahue's version of it. Um, so I've had a chance to think about it a little bit. <clears throat> um, it's not a genre I know well, but I've really enjoyed, uh, I really enjoy the channels that are the hosts of the genre. I'll put those all in the comment. I'm the hosts of the event, the Spring Into Adventure two-month event. And what little bits I've read and then discussions I've heard them them making up, up to now and they've got more coming. It's like, oh yeah, I want to read that. Oh, that sounds great. I want to read that. I, I, I really feel right now, quite sincerely, that not having read H. Ryder Haggard is a huge, huge gap in my in my pop <clears throat> my popular fiction knowledge. So I want to get on those. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it for the month. Anyway, I'm going to start the tag so this doesn't get too long. Oh boy. I had some ideas for some of these. I wish I'd thought of one for the first one. The first tag is, what's your favorite adventure book? So right away I have to start thinking about defining adventure for myself, as other people have dis discussed. Oh man, should I be pausing or what? Um, my favorite adventure book. Oh, I know. There's ones, there's a series I really like. I had forgotten about it for a while. Mark mentioned it in his video, and that is the George MacDonald Fraser Flashman books. I love those books. I was so upset when I ran out of them. He'd already passed away by the by the time I read them. I was just terribly upset. I think those books are wonderful. Flashman's a great rogue, a very unlikable character, um, in the in the best sense. Uh, I enjoy reading those books a lot. <clears throat> I'm going to count that series as my favorite adventure book. My definition of adventure, and I'm probably being too strict, I'm, in fact I'm being so strict with it that I'm not going to be able to answer any of these questions without bending my own rule, but I think of adventure, as opposed to a lot of action and things like that, um, which is part of it, but I think of an adventure as a book about a, a person or a group of people who go out into the unknown by choice and for one of a better word for fun for fun or profit or something but not for example I wouldn't count the early Tarzan books as adventure novels because Tarzan in uh, Tarzan the Apes is a, is a baby who is, who's, whose parents are killed and he's taken and raised by apes so he's just living his normal life and then he's has to get back to civilization and he's 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 just not, not out there adventuring. You know, he's, he's got his, his certain goals. Same with John Carter. He's, he's forcibly taken to Mars. He's trying to find his way there. He's trying to survive. Um, whereas somebody like uh, Alan Quartermain or, or um, Professor Challenger, they, they set out on an expedition. They set out to conquer something outside of their normal sphere of, of reference. Uh, and that's what I look at as adventure, but some of these I'm going to have to say, you know, and there's many mixed genre adventures and stuff. Many things I, I read are adventure adjacent. Adjacent. What's the newest, most recently published adventure book you've read? I forgot to look that one up too. Um, maybe I can find, I can look at my, I keep a list of everything I've read, fortunately. And I... Currently reading this two-volume sword and sorcery series, and this is where I get into trouble already. The Hanover series by uh, the Lord of the Scattered Land and the City of Blood and Sh oh boy. Anyway, um, 
I will get the names in a minute. But again, they're not, the character Hanover in those books is, is he's, a, he's a king who's defeated. His country is taken over. He's put into slavery. He escapes. He spends the next two books trying to build up a loyal resistance and, to, and makes it his business to go about and and uh, save every citizen of his city-state uh, that was that was put into bondage over the years. Um, I can't find it now, so I'll just list it in the comments. It's I've mentioned it in my other videos. A lot of people are reading these books right now. So is that adventure? Because again, he's on a, a quest to do right. And adventure, I think, is on a quest for profit or for fun or something like that. It's a little lighter in genres. So anyway, but I'm still going to count it. It's the most recent one I've read. Um, if I'd waited a week, I could have said Captain Blood, maybe, because I'm going to read that next. What's the oldest, earliest published adventure book you've read? Okay, I can't be original here. As other people have said, I think it's the uh, Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, I'm not as well read in the ancient world as, as many other uh, fine YouTubers are. Uh, I would I would call that an adventure. As much as anything, Gilgamesh again is is uh, a victim of circumstances. Same with the Green Knight. Uh, you might call that an adventure. He goes on a quest, although he is he is well, he doesn't really go on a quest in in the Green Knight. He is he goes to fulfill a promise that he made, uh, and and. Beowulf is that an adventure? See, to me, I would think these are all adventures, even though they don't fit my event, my definition of adventure. Beowulf, same thing. He's fighting monsters to to protect his community. Is that an adventure? Anyway, it's probably one of those. <clears throat> What's your favorite adventure book author? Oh, I was going to use George MacDonald Fraser for that. Um, let me see who else I can say. There's a book. There is a writer named Jack Vance, who is one of my favorite writers, who wrote a wonderful series called The Demon Princes, he wrote uh, another pretty good series called uh, Ports of Call, I think it was just two books L later in his career. Ports of Call especially is more of an adventure book. And Jack Vance, I think, really enjoyed adventure stories. And <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> I don't know, is this even right to do this to people to sit there and cough and stuff and, and ham and haw? But anyway, you don't have to watch it. Uh, and this ties into a later question where we're talking about what genres to pair. I really like the kind of science fiction that, that is not adventure based, but one exception is uh, John. Uh, Jack Vance's novels. I think uh, I treat them as when I read them, it's because I re want to read an adventure story, like a swashbuckling type story. I'm going to go back and do number one at the end because I forgot what I was doing. I took a shower, had all this in my mind in the shower. What's your favorite adventure book character? Oh no, I don't have to go back. I can put it in here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slot Jack Vance there as favorite adventure book author just because I don't generally like science fiction adventure. I, I look for other things in science fiction, the literature of ideas, and I, and I, but Jack Vance uh, managed to, to handle adventure very well in the science fiction uh, milieu. Okay, what's your favorite adventure book character? Okay, I could have said earlier as my favorite adventure book. I probably should have said. The Three Musketeers, and my favorite adventure character is D'Artagnan, and Edmond Dantes, the the hero of Count of Monte Cristo, is probably a close second. But I love uh, D'Artagnan, especially in The Three Musketeers. It's the only one I've read. I think I, I haven't read the other books. I'll be honest, but. Uh, To me, his attitude in the beginning of that book is what really sort of bodies the 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 uh, the apotheosis, whatever 
of, of a adventure character. You know, and those opening scenes where he's get he happens to get in a fight with three different musketeers. And it happens across Athos, Porthos, and Aramis all separately. And they all challenge him to duels. He agrees to all the duels. And he goes there and he's not not terribly terrified as a sensible person would be. He just thinks it'll work out somehow. And I think that's the spirit of adventure. You know, he comes from a small town. You know, he's an old donkey or something like that. And he's got his father's sword because his father had been a musketeer. And, and, and he's told to go off, just go off, join the musketeers. And he really takes to it very well. And The Three Musketeers is an excellent, excellent adventure book because even though they are military men with duties to perform, the, the, the plot of the book and the things they get involved with are like extracurricular. That's another thing I would say about adventures. It's like when people are going be, uh, above and beyond what they're supposed to do, you know, like... Uh, Like Sam Spade doesn't have adventures because he's hired to work for clients. So the things that happen to him when he's when he's on a case are part of his job. But the things that happen to the three musketeers are things that they're making it their business to do with the four musketeers. Okay, so that's my D'Artagnan is my favorite ca book character, adventure book character. Do you prefer fiction or nonfiction adventure books? Definitely fiction. I've hardly read any non-fiction books. The last one I can remember I've read, I think, is called River of Doubt by, I don't remember who it's by, but it's about Theodore Roosevelt. After after his presidential term, he, he was a bit uh, uh, depressed, didn't know what else to do with his life, and went on this uh, expedition on the Amazon <clears throat> with his son and others, and it was okay. I have to say I really enjoy fiction a lot more than nonfiction. I always feel like I should read more nonfiction. I do have trouble kind of if it, uh, believing everything I read in nonfiction. And the older I get, the more skeptical I, I am of various nonfiction books that I've read and how much is really true in them. Um, so. I would hate to be reading a nonfiction adventure book and find out, well, really, they didn't really do that with the raft, and they really had all this other support, and, and Thro really went home and stayed with his mother's on the weekend. He didn't really live in the cabin for two years, and you know, you just hear so many of these stories all the time about what really went down. What's your favorite? But uh, okay, do you consider yourself? <clears throat> So I do, but you know, ninety percent of my my reading is fiction, and and uh, and I feel you get a lot a lot more truth in fiction sometimes, just because the author can use their own mind, their own empathy to to tell you how people would really feel in a situation. You feel like you're really getting the story. You know, I would almost rather read a. A novel based on Thoreau's life at Walden because then we could get sense of his inner life other than what just he's saying about the leaves and stuff that he that he collects. I don't know why I'm going off on Thoreau so hard. Anyway, sorry about that. Do you consider yourself adventurous? Why or why not? My first instinct was to say no. And then I heard Steve Steve's version and also Mark's version of their answers and I really hear what they're saying and I would like to say yes but I still feel like it's no. Um, I, I get what Steve Donahue was saying about being adventurous in reading and uh, I guess they both said that and what they both said about being adventurous by traveling a lot and that kind of thing but I like comfort and I like uh, taking things easy and maybe that's just because I've been sick so I've been sitting around the house all week and I just really want everything to be quiet and and uh, calm and I, I like to take things as they come I, I don't like things charging at me I like to be in control of things so I'd say I'm not adventurous when I do something I'd say people might think I'm adventurous because I moved to Albania but I planned it for a long time and it's very easy and if it was hard I'd probably give up and I'm just 
don't worry, I'm joking. It's just not, it's not a big deal. But I just don't think I'm adventurous in, in the sense of, oh, let's, let me just get in there, get my hands dirty, and let me suffer and stuff. But I am an adventurous reader. If, you, if I could put that qualification on, I would say I'm adventurous reader. And in fact, before starting book two, looking at the time here, see where I'm at. Before starting uh, BookTube, I would say I was the most adventurous reader that I've known by quite a margin. I read more widely than anybody I know really well. I really hate to sound like a braggart, but I'm racking my brain right then to think of anybody who reads more widely than me. You know, all my life has been like, oh, you're reading that, or oh, you're reading that, you must be really smart, or oh, you're reading that, you must have no taste at all. <clears throat> and I've always done a lot of that, and and this is one thing I love so much about this booktubers community is there's so many people like this, like me, um, that that'll read anything, and they're so non non judgmental in their reading. And I've talked about this in other videos, but it's probably like around hour fifteen of my newbie tag or something. So maybe people, maybe this is not a repeat for most people, but you know I, I like things that are quote-unquote trash, I like great literature, I just like what I like. And I will read something that I have never heard of or that I know nothing about. And that's pl that's just enough reason to read it right there. If it's a genre, genre I've never heard of or don't know anything about, there's not much left at this point because I'm pretty old. But, you know, I'm going to dive in and read it. And there's a few that I've been deficient on, which I should not have been deficient on. I'm going to be reading those in Garb August. So I, I won't, that's just that uh, there's a certain sub-genre of a certain popular genre that I'm going to read in Garb August. And that's a, I'm not going to tell you what it is. That's just a teaser. You're going to have to wait until August. So subscribe and like now so you won't miss that or any other great content. Okay, what's your, f okay, so that was eight, so nine. What's your favorite genre to combine with the adventure genre? You know, I, I referenced how it would not be science fiction before. Wouldn't be mystery. I would like to think of it as its own genre because I feel like combining with something else makes it something else. <coughs> how about this? If I say fantasy... Combining, because when you combine adventure and fantasy, you get a specific, in my opinion, you get a specific genre of, subgenre of fantasy, which is one of my favorite genres as a kid and is now becoming one again because of the era we're living in, and that's sword and sorcery. Sword and sorcery as opposed to epic fantasy or a popular fantasy, you know, a magic school fantasy or whatever, is more adventure-based, less, uh, you know, the chosen one kind of thing, the fulfillment of the pro prophecy things. There's a little bit of that in Conan because Conan and the first Conan story, because Howard did not write them chronologically, in the first story he's a king, so there's a little bit, as you go through the stories, you know that this guy who's just a young thief, you know, and, a, and then a mercenary and all these different roles he plays in his life, mostly just profiting, he ends up being a king of a country. So you can sort of, and they kind of did this with the movies, you know, they foreshadowed it in, in the first Schwarzenegger movie, it's like he has a destiny to be a king. And, but accepting that, and it's true, and uh, his other great sword and sorcery character, Call is also a king. But when I think of, for example, my favorite sword and sorcery writer is probably Fritz Leiber, who wrote the Fat from the Great Mauser stories. The first one of which, chronologically, I think, the first one of which is called Two Sought Adventure. It's about these two guys, Fafford, big, giant, red-haired barbarian from the north, and the Grey Mauser, a little, little slippery little thief guy who has a little few spells and stuff, and they're just out to um, enjoy life and hopefully get some easy money by 
robbing things and, and or you know taking commissions and things like that and there's a great story called the two best thieves in Lankmar that shows why they never really get ahead and there's a lot of humor in those stories and I love them I've got to read them again so that's why I think I, that's how I distinguish sword and sorcery even though most of the sword and sorcery I mean a lot of the sword and sorcery I've read before including the Hanover books which I, which I just finished um, doesn't qualify as sort of associated with that, but Howard Andrew Jones, who wrote the Hanover books, Lord of the Shattered Land, and the others, finally remembered his name, would probably say that, you know, that's incorrect because <clears throat> because his character Hanover really do, does have a, a mission, a, a higher purpose. But I like, I like the working stiff ones. I like, like, Nifthaline by Michael Shea, and I like uh, Fafnir and Green Mouser, as I said, or uh, Jarell of Jory, um, or who is it? I wanted to say, I didn't mean to say Jarell of Jory, although I do like those stories by C.L. Moore. I wanted to say Joanna Russ's character, Alex, who, uh, if you read those stories, you know, there's plenty of uh, subtle references to Fafnir and the Grey Mauser in them, so I'm sure she was inspired. Joanna Russ, the author of those stories, was... Joanna Russ, the author of the Alex stories, was inspired by them, too. So, coming to the end here, I don't have much to say for number 10. Do you play or have you ever played adventure-themed games? Once in high school, I did... Um, Sit on, sit in on a D and D game, and I thought it was very. Uh, it just, it was not fun. Um, it could have been just the people or whatever, but I didn't really. I wasn't pulled into that world. Um, there was a lot of going. Uh, you know, you know. There's a lot of okay. Turn to the left. You go into a room. There's a chest in the room. And you go in, open the chest. The chest is empty. Empty. Okay, can I try and see if there's a false panel on the chest? No, there's no false panel. And it's like there's empty room after empty room. I don't know if this guy who, who was the dungeon master didn't want to think of any stuff or just like wandering around this em empty dungeon and with, should have called it Dungeon and No Dragons. But that movie was kind of fun. You know, I think, wasn't there one about a movie in here? I must have missed it. Oh, what's your favorite film adaption of an adventure book? <clears throat> Robin Hood is the movie Robin Hood actually adapted from the Howard Pyle novel or is it just a compendium of different legends you know I'm always hazy on the whole Robin Hood thing you know how much of it comes from Howard Pyle and how much of it comes from different sources I read Ivanhoe a couple of years ago and I was like There's an expanded universe. There's an extended universe. I didn't know. You know, Robin Hood's a side character in, in Ivanhoe, Walter Scott's Ivanhoe. Uh, so, but when that movie came on when I was a kid, we knew it was coming on for, I guess, when we got TV, TV Guide or something, and my parents had seen it before, and I'm, I was so excited for that movie to be coming on TV. And I also saw Captain Blood, but Errol Flynn, what a great character, what a great um, movie star. And that movie is so terrific. I think I, maybe I'll watch that as part of, as part of the uh, Spring Into Adventure. There's a, there's a, where you watch a movie on there. And oh man, that movie's so good. It's so exciting at seeing it as a kid. I'll, I'll go with that one. I'm glad I ended up with that one because my I have a, really, since I don't play video games, I really didn't have my save for number 10. But The Adventures of Robin Hood, the original version, probably directed by Michael Curtiz, I'm guessing. hope I'm not wrong. Starring uh, Basil Rathbone as the sheriff of Nottingham. One of my favorites, Basil Rathbone. You, you know him probably as... As... Uh, Sherlock Holmes, or Son of Frankenstein, or the evil villain in Marco Zorro. So many things, but I'm, my nose is going, so I'm going to cut there. I'm going to tag Faceless Book Reviews, probably nobody else. I, I know because he, he reads a lot of Washington stuff, so I, thought, I think he might have some good answers for this. Yeah, consider yourself tagged. Otherwise, if you haven't been tagged on this, 
Again, thanks, Mark, so much for tagging me on this, and we'll talk again.